Hi to everybody. Um, first of all, it is me, so it's going to be fairly informal. And as I said in the abstract, a lot of it is qualitative, which is a nice way for saying that there is no number crunching, graphs, etc., etc. I'm going to reflect very much on our experience of having run the reading project with GP students last year. The reading project has changed um, this year, but I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, so last year, 2015, it involved Raj, Yati, Huda and myself, who were the four, the four lower six GP students. It wasn't run with the O-level students. All right? Okay. Um, I just want to touch on this. It is a technicality, but I think we need to be aware of it. I know it's just words, but English teachers are quite into this. It is a project, not a program. And I think we do need to be careful about the use of words, because a program suggests um, something that is long-term, it's something that is sustained, it's going to be very structured, it has a clear, a clear progression over a long period of time, which would be assessed, checked. You'd have graded reading material on a reading program, which would have to be very carefully thought out. It's not just scattering magazines around the school and telling students to read. Um, you'd have to track progress of all the students regularly on the reading program. Um, structured reading time, which would be built into the whole school curriculum. It would be, as I've said, totally integrated into what happens at school. It would also involve a whole school commitment. Project, on the other hand, we can see as a long, involved assignment. So it's very much a reading project. All right, the background. Reading. Clearly, there is a problem, and this is not only in the English department. It affects every subject, every teacher in the whole of the school. Obviously, the context we're talking about is A-level 6th form. What is the problem? Our students do not read enough, very simply. Okay. There are lots of technicalities and all kinds of words to do with reading and reading skills. The problem is they do not read enough. Why? They have poor reading skills. Or, they, because they don't read enough, they have poor reading skills. Or we could say they don't read enough because they have poor reading skills. So it's a kind of sort of impasse where the one plays off on the other. Then very important and relevant to us at 6-4 is that the students do not engage meaningfully, meaningfully with texts. And by texts, I do not mean WhatsApp or messaging services. <laughs> I mean chunks of reading. And I think this is a really big problem. I mean, as an English teacher, when I look at, a, say, a sociology textbook, I just think, how do they do it? And that's the same with all their textbooks. Reading, we have, have identified, is a problem. Um, so, do not engage meaningfully with texts. It impacts on their general ability English. There's loads of research on this, that the more students read in a language, the more proficient they become at that language. Impacts on their general ability in English. It impacts on all their other subjects. Right, so solution. Very easy. Students need to read more. Okay. That's how simply we've actually looked at it. But reading more is not enough. They also need to be able to read analytically. So they need to be able to read between the lines. What is being suggested here? Uh, what do I think this means? This sort of a thing. And critically, they need to be able to say, um, particularly in subjects like sociology, GP, history, do I agree with what I'm reading, with what this writer has actually said? And to do that, you have to understand what you are reading at a fairly high level. That's for free. Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. Okay. So, sorry, to read more analytically and to read more critically. Basically, what we saw in this reading project is it's almost like there's a wall. If you do not understand reading, and if I think about the students, reading is not a great thing to have to do, particularly at this level. It's hard. There is so much vocabulary that they just don't know. It's really hard. So because it's hard, they're not going to go out in their spare time where they spent the day at school dealing with those fat economic, sociology, geography, science books and go and read. Not even a newspaper. Okay? So they're not reading enough, poor reading skills. It's just, it's almost as though there's a wall that happens. People don't want to read. Look, this is not typical or um, specific to Brunei. It's all over the world. 
So I thought, what we have to take out of the equation this thing about enjoyment for reading. Because right now they need to be able to read. And they need to find a way of managing these really difficult texts. So the reading project came in as a way to break down this wall. And the history was it started way back as this reading more. So the project started basically by telling students you have to read five books. Any five books. And because it was encouraging to them to read, tell me about them. That was all. Either write about it or tell me no marks. But we needed to move on from that. So we got together and we discussed aims quite a few years ago. And aim one, we're looking at different levels because of our different students, is to get students reading more. Now because you've got so many varied readers and they come from different backgrounds, and I will tell you, I was quite shocked at GP level, in sixth form, that means everybody has got through their O-level English, how many students have never ever read a whole book? These are sixth form students on an academic course. And I know that because some of them have said on the project, they said, wow, that's the first time I've actually read a whole book. And these are students that I know have sat in schools with reading programs where they had to read a book for 15 minutes every day. I mean, clearly they were quite adept at opening it at a page, staring at it and doing this. But then the second aim, though, is there are students that do read, but a lot of students are reading very proud. They read a book a month, a book a, re uh, a week, but what are they reading? Because sort of girly romance novels all very well, but that's not going to develop their reading skill at sixth form. So it's looking at age-appropriate and relevant material. So I'm not reading books that were actually written for English-speaking 13, 14-year-olds. And then the next aim is to read more challenging material. So you've got at the other end of the scale the much brighter kids, who at sixth form, particularly upper six, should now be actually coping with a Time magazine article and really more challenging texts. Okay, so the project, the tasks, it's run over the period of a year, and there are specific tasks they have to, um, they have to complete. These tasks were decided by the English, they are decided by the GP teachers at the time. They have to read a novel, and the task that they have to do, the assessment, is an oral presentation to the rest of the class. So we're taking in some speaking skills. The novel is not exactly, but sort of free choice. They have to check the GP teacher has to okay that novel, so they're not reading Harry Potter. Okay, we've decided we need to move on from that. But at the same time, it has to be a novel that is met to the level of what each student can read. So you've got the really bright students, they certainly can't read an easy book, they need to make it a little bit more relevant. Then they've got to read another book, which is a biography. Again, we were quite broad about it. It had to be a true life, it had to be true. So if they wanted to read, um, heaven forbid, the memoir of Lady Gaga, that was fine, okay? Even if it was written in quite easy language, if it was rel relative, relevant, fine. The task was they had to do a written review, which was on a standard form, to make it easier. Then we had a set work, and the decision was that each GP tutor would choose a book that they knew, because remember we're not literature students, and that they thought would go well with their students. This was interesting as to what we all chose. Um, a book, for example, would be To Kill a Mockingbird, which some of you may or may not be familiar with, but it had to do with, it had to have themes that were relevant to GP and life. To Kill a Mockingbird deals with childhood, single parenting, um, very much to do with values, loss of innocence, growing up from a child when something happens, the process of the law, racism, discrimination, stereotyping, capital punishment. So there were a lot of things to work with there. And we would then teach the book and the task, to keep it open, each teacher could decide what sort of task. It could be a debate at the end, it could be a test, it could be an essay. The, the teacher could decide. Each of these tasks carried the same weighting. Next, next, they had to read, remember this was over the period of a year, a short story or an article of about 800 words, and that had a straightforward comprehension question and answer task. Then, as well as this, throughout the year, they had to keep a reading and media record, which was assessed with a criteria that the students already had, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, the idea was this, anything they read, they read the newspaper, they read an article in a magazine, um, they watched a movie, they were supposed to write it down, write a, write a comment. 
vocab notebook, which is supposed to be integral, I say supposed to, because obviously this is carried out to varying degrees and we've learned from it, is the way they, they've got points here, it was also five, if a student took a notebook and they actually took down vocabulary from their other subjects and put that in, and from their own reading, they scored high. Those that had a vocabulary notebook and by the end of the year they had ten items in it, clearly didn't score very well. So we managed that. And then they had to keep a file of knowledge that they gathered. Articles. But if they had an article, it had to be highlighted, it had to be annotated. Okay. The knowledge file they had was successful to varying degrees. At the end of the project, we um, gave the students, at the end of the year, a very simple questionnaire. 120 students. First question was, their attitude to reading, well, what was your attitude to reading when you arrived at PTET? 52 students liked reading, 68 students did not like reading. Now the next question from research point of view is a bit dodgy. Anyway, we felt we wanted to ask it. Is reading relevant for life today? Okay, clearly all our students said. Yes. yes. However, yes. one said no. <laughs> okay, that was a question I might not include next time. <laughs> then we also asked them now, at the end of the year, what is your attitude towards reading now? What I've got now is I'm going to run through um, some of the comments that came from students. Is We all did the survey together and because I took responsibility um, for collating everything, what I did was I collated and then took comments that summarized what the majority had to say. Oh, I'm on the wrong slide, sorry. Oh, no, not. Okay. Um, reading is important. There was an overwhelming evidence that students said, yes, reading is important. I actually read more after entering PT compared to secondary school. That was directly, that's a quote, many of them. I quite like that. A lot of them. Well, honest enough to say, I still don't like reading, but I'm aware now that I have to, and that it is important for my other, my other subjects. I read more newspapers. There's a big push. You will see me running around the school with the Brunei Times every day. I like that too. I'm trying to like reading. <laughs> I mean, all these just show some kind of engagement. I thought, yeah, it's taken me 11 years, but never mind. <laughs> then the last question was actually suggestions as to whether we should keep the reading project. There was an overwhelming yes, that it should be continued, which was very easy now that they were going into upper six, of course, and they didn't have to do it. Oh, yeah, sorry, my reading speed has increased. Okay. So what students want? Okay, books related to life. Up-to-date books, I thought that was great because we all do this, especially English teachers. You know, people give you books they don't want anymore and you want to put books in your classroom, so you've got sort of books edition 1934, writing <laughs> so small, they're all moth-eaten and they end up. Students clearly not into that. Get shopping, ladies and gentlemen. There was, there was an overwhelming thing that as GP teachers, we, they wanted us to encourage reading. They wanted to kind of, uh, a lot of it was, we need to be forced to read. Okay, fair enough. This is also interesting because, I mean, once you started getting into this thing, yes, you get a prize. You get a chocolate for reading. People start reading because they get a chocolate, which is counterproductive. But actually, what I didn't mention is in the tasks, those tasks actually counted, they were out of 100 when we totaled the marks, and they counted 20% towards their final exam mark that went on their report. We, that, however, because of the system we work in, did pick up a few problems, okay, which I'll talk about later. But there was an incentive. 20% went towards the end of your exam. So the exam only counted 80%. On. Um, this is, it's a great incentive. I think some of you all know this, the magazine that the science department put out. A lot of us have been plugging this because it's all generated by students, articles, very relevant, fantastic reading. This has been a fantastic, fantastic addition to the school and support for us, um, for the English teachers trying to get reading going. 
I love that. I'm not quite sure what was meant. Renovate the library, maybe armchairs, I don't know, waitresses serving coffee, not sure. But anyway. All right. Now, when I was putting this all together, I got immense, immense help and support from Chico Zuliana, whose master's thesis was actually on um, reading programs in secondary schools in Brunei, their impact, uh, sorry, their implementation and their impact. Now, I'm not trying to make up that I'm a whole nerd, I'm a big nerd and I have nothing else to do, but I actually read the whole thing and it was fantastic. It was, and I would recommend it. It was great reading, it was relevant, it was quite outrageous giving the time. She did not, I mean, she was very honest in it. No names or anything mentioned and it was a really good study of what happens with reading and basically looking at why some of our students don't read so well. These are some quotes um, that I actually took from. Okay, focus on academic reading in preparation for tests produces reluctant readers. Unfortunately, in the system that we work on, I think we're all guilty of this, we teach to a test, we don't teach skills for life, skills for anything else. So part of the problem is students come to sixth form, they have not been taught or had reading skills properly developed because the focus in reading is to pass an O-level comprehension paper. And unfortunately, that paper does not equip you with enough reading skill. And we see this again and again at sixth form level. So it's, I'm not blaming anybody, but it's a systemic thing that we do have to deal with. Reading is about the process, not the product. The product would be the test. The thing would be, right, let's have a reading program, 15 minutes silent reading every day. Put magazines in the PS rooms. That's not a process. That's just right, we have a reading program. Okay. People are busy, there are lots of reasons for it, but this is the reality. Effective reading means access to knowledge across the curriculum. It's what we all want for our students in our own way, we're all trying to do it, but the system is bigger than us and it often sort of negates that. But if students can be more skillful reader, readers, they start going, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, sociology, and they can link what they did in one subject with what they do in GP and other subjects. I thought this was great. The best way to improve language is to live with the people who speak it. The second best way is to read in that language. That comes out of clearly lots of research. Okay, now, what is the impact of this project? As I've said, it has been running for many years. Um, Raj, I don't know how long. Where's Raj? So I've been here for seven years, and it was already going, so maybe 10 years now. So it's probably been running for 10 years, but we've changed it, and it has changed to its present form over years. I think one of the big things that motivates teachers, because we've got a project now, we've got a reason to take books into the classroom, and I mean, just little things, little anecdotes. I remember once, Raj got terribly enthusiastic, and another colleague of ours from Tanjung Maya, um, the two of them had this plan to go to the book fair, and the three of us went along to the book fair to actually buy books so we could have books in our classroom looking for cheap deals. And it was quite bizarre. It became a bit competitive. Somebody would sneak off and find something really cheap and really good. And sort of almost dare the next one to find something. But we were all motivated to go out and get books into our classrooms, ask friends for books they weren't reading. Um, the newspapers, the Brunei Times get delivered to most schools. In my experience, I have seen those newspapers do nothing, never leave a teacher's desk. I've seen some that just pile up in staff rooms. They never get to the students. So Yanni actually organized that newspapers came here because before she came we didn't have them. And she started distributing them and actually putting them in places. One in admin, one in the library, there's one in each of the PS rooms and those newspapers are changed every day because having old newspapers lying around is not creating a good environment. So. Then the nice, the nice thing that happened is when Dennis arrived, he came into one of my classes before he started teaching, and I was addressing the newspapers because I now subscribe to the Brunei Times, so I've got one in the classroom. And he said, oh, I'm also going to subscribe. Nice idea. He subscribed to the newspaper, he's got one in his class, and then Christina didn't. Yeah, Christina. I'm on to it. You're relaxing your snacks in here. Um, then Christina decided she was not going to be outdone and she too subscribed to the newspaper and that we've got newspapers out there. 
So there are newspapers. Do the students read them from page to page, I mean, cover to cover? Not quite, but they're getting there. Um, again, this links into creating a reading environment. And interestingly enough, um, Charles has, without realizing it, done an incredible amount to, Charles, are you here? Yeah, okay. To actually, in his own way, encouraging this reading. Whenever Charles travels, which you all know he does a lot, he always brings back material from his travels, travel brochures, airline magazines, um, and it's, it's great material, and it's new, it's updated. There's all, I've, I've seen, there's always new stuff coming through in the racks. And I've actually borrowed some of it and had it in my classroom for a little bit and then put it back again. So that's been great. And then, of course, also with the reading environment is, the, is this. All right, so there are copies of these now in both the PS rooms. Um, also, the reading project has given students a reason to read. They have to do it. Um, and just lovely little things, again, anecdotes. This year, I was, I was actually quite surprised. I was just walking from my classroom, and at one of the tables, there were a group of students sitting in break, and there were about five of them. And there were three of them standing there. They must have had three or four novels. They had books, and they were discussing them. And the one guy was actually telling them about this novel. And I suddenly thought, yeah, it's Lower Six Reading Project. And I think that is a posit very positive. It's about getting this culture of reading going. Um, also, we have noticed that because of the reading project and our commitment to it, it is shifting what students are reading. They are reading newspapers, if not all the time, but because there are newspapers around the school, you often go down to admin in the morning while students are waiting to say the prayers or make announcements. There's a newspaper there, that's where they sit. They are flipping through the newspaper. Even if they are only reading the headlines, something is happening. But the newspaper needs to be there for them to do that. Right, what now? The GP department needs to sustain the project, and I think in the long term, sort of the ideal and the dream is to actually look at whole school involvement. That thing of every teacher is a teacher of English. I know, no, I know, nice idea. And then looking at moving from project to program, and it would be wonderful in the future, I know we're all busy, it's not happening tomorrow or next month, is to actually possibly have a reading program. But a reading program takes hard work commitment. You can't just decide to do it and do it, says Fleur nervously, admin. <coughs> okay, um, now, big question, will this improve academic results? I've only got one answer to that, and it comes from Dr. Zeus. A bigger gift than that I don't think we can give our students. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I rest with my case. Are there any questions? I think I have time. <coughs> Five minutes, yeah? Correct? Four minutes. Seven minutes. Oh, seven minutes. Are there any questions at all? You've got seven minutes, guys. How's the reading among students in the PS groups? Do they become Okay, I don't, I don't know because I, I don't have a PS slot. But the only thing is, I do. Um, I, I've changed the newspapers in the PS room, and they are frequently out of. They're in those racks, which are a pain, but they do at least keep the newspapers there. They're often in the wrong order, which I'm hoping that not some sort of more person isn't just going and rearranging them. Because when I go in, I actually make sure that they are. There are only 10 newspapers, so I take the oldest one out, I rearrange them in the day, chronologically again. Often when I go there, they are actually out of order, and often they've come out, or they've been left lying. And my initial thing was, oh, can't they be more neat and tidy? And I suddenly thought, that's good. That means they are being read. Not by everybody. It will be a, it will be a group of students that are doing this, and that's fine. That, that's fine. You've got to start somewhere. So in the PS room, yes, I, they, they are. Look, it's nagging. I mean, every single day in my classroom, well, not every, but almost every day, I go through the newspaper, I select. So I read the newspaper every day. I actually select some articles, and I put the headlines on the board with the page numbers. 
they snap it with their phone. Even if they're not reading it, they're getting the headlines. So I think, yes. But you're not going to walk in there and say 25 students read the newspapers. Anything else? Something nobody's asked me and I haven't touched on is the whole role of digital reading. That's another whole thing, but I think we also need to be careful. Is there's an assumption because the students are on their phones and computers and the internet all the time, is that they're reading. The truth is they're not reading very much or very well because I've actually gone onto some of the blog sites, or the blogs rather, that students are reading because these they put down in that reading media and I mean, it's, it's fine, it's what they do in their spare time. It's not helping their reading at sixth form level. I mean, something we don't address are multiple literacies and how you actually read effectively online and things like that. So that, that's something that in the future we're going to have to look at. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'm going to say thank you very much.